A persistent misconception is that neonates in hospital intensive care units don't feel pain. In fact, neonates are capable of sensing pain soon after birth, and repeated painful events can produce long term changes in the developing nervous system, which alter the response to future sensations such as touch, temperature, and pain. Increased nociceptive input from tissue damaging diagnostic procedures such as heel lancing and therapy as part of their clinical care can disrupt the maturation of the neonate's somatosensory system and cause altered pain responses. Noxious stimuli frequently result in neonates displaying behaviors such as facial actions, including a bulging brow, eyes squeezed tightly together, nasolabial furrowing, mouth stretched both horizontally and vertically with a taut tongue, crying, and fisting or splayed fingers. Tissue damaging procedures can produce physiological responses, such as increased heart rate or changes in breathing. Localized painful stimuli, such as heel lance, will result in movement of the foot away from the stimulus in adults or older children. But in a neonate, more generalized movements in the whole leg or both legs and the arms can be produced. In the preterm neonate, a poorly tuned motor reflex signal from the spinal cord to the periphery causes these gross movements. This is in part due to the large nociceptive receptive fields. Receptive fields refer to an area on the skin that activates a single spinal dorsal horn neuron. This activation results in the signal being sent to the brain via projection neuron. The large receptive field size of individual dorsal horn neurons increases their chances of being activated by a tactile stimulus such as touch. Large receptive fields also increase the extent of receptive field overlap, thus expanding the chances of a stimulus activating multiple dorsal horn neurons simultaneously and, consequently, more signals being sent to the brain. The injury site initiates action potentials in neuronal pathways, which project to the parts of the brain responsible for sensing pain. They are altered and modified in the spinal dorsal horn before reaching the contralateral side of the brain, reflecting the action potential of both local circuitry and descending pathways. The response to a nociceptive input changes as the neonate matures. The physiological mechanisms underlying these changes will now be explored. Low threshold A beta myelinated fibers for touch and high threshold unmyelinated C fibers for nociception fire action potentials following noxious inputs. Factors such as neuropeptides released by the injured tissue and damaged blood vessels also facilitate the depolarization of nerve fibers. Action potentials of C and A beta fibers are delivered to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, where they are modulated before they are sent to the contralateral side of the brain via projection neurons in lamina 1 and 5 of the spinal cord. In the neonate, C fibers terminate mostly in lamina 2, whereas touch-activated A-beta fibers terminate throughout the dorsal horn. Following a noxious stimulus, both fiber types activate ascending pain pathways, either directly or by delivering excitatory signals via local interneurons to projection neurons. Because an abundance of low threshold A-beta fibers are present in lamina 2, the immature spinal dorsal horn receives more low threshold input, which might help activity-dependent maturation of nociceptive circuits. This also means that in very premature infants in intensive care, less intense stimuli such as handling or diaper change can produce responses that are seen only with more intense stimuli at older ages. Inhibitory signals dampen excitatory signals. Local spinal inhibitory circuitry is functional in preterm neonates, providing inhibitory signals to spinal dorsal horn nociceptive circuitry. However, descending inhibitory pathways from the brain are slow to mature during the postnatal period. 
and consequently inhibitory signaling is ineffective in the neonate. The increase in local excitatory input due to A-beta fibers in lamina 2, in combination with the deficiency of local and descending inhibitory signals, render neonates more sensitive to tactile input. This increased excitability, allied to immature inhibition, is the reason for large receptive fields in the periphery. As the neonate develops, key changes occur in the maturing dorsal horn that alters signal modulation, in turn affecting the ascending signals to the brain. A-beta fibers lose their synapses with local excitatory interneurons and retract from lamina 2. As a result, firing of A-beta fibers from innocuous input no longer activates pain pathways. Inhibitory descending pathways mature and begin to effectively dampen down the excitability of spinal dorsal horn. As a consequence of these key changes, the peripheral receptive fields of neonates decrease to the adult size. The result of these changes in the dorsal horn is a more finely tuned pain sensory pathway such that the infant only responds to a more intense stimuli and in a more localized way. Therefore, the fine-tuning of the neonate somatosensory system can be observed in a less exaggerated response when the neonate receives a noxious stimulus. Neonates in NICU receive necessary repetitive stimuli at an important developmental stage that can disrupt fine-tuning of the somatosensory system and predispose them to enhanced sensitivity to future painful events. More research as well as enhanced understanding and communication is needed in neonatal pain management to reduce pain experiences and ensure healthy development. An enhanced understanding of the underlying pain mechanisms will better inform healthcare professionals in their assessment and management of neonatal pain.